Definitely got my money's worth with this drone. Five years, five years it's been since I picked up the DJI Mavic version one. Boom! Brand new drone. I haven't flown it before, haven't read the directions. I don't know, hopefully it works out. It definitely served us well. Here in a hotel room in Phoenix, Arizona, came to Arizona to do two things. One, play No Limit Texas Hold'em. That's right, I said no limit Texas Hold'em. Two is to bet on sports online. Uh, which one do you wanna hear about first? Basically for as long as they've had poker in casinos here in Arizona, they've run the games as spread limit games, meaning you can bet a certain amount up to a certain amount. So like if you're playing two, three spread limit, 300 max, basically you're only allowed to bet up to $300. It's not no limit then the next person could raise an another 300, I think, and then back and forth up to, I think, four raises. It's very complicated and sort of convoluted way to run games for not much good reason. Now, they have since switched the games to proper No Limit Texas Hold'em. As we all know it, bet any amounts in, in your stack at any time. So, uh, yeah, so I came out here to uh, get involved in the uh, No Limit Texas Hold'em games. That's the first thing I'm doing, I did some of that last night. Three, five, no limit, Texas Hold'em. Not spread limit, no limit Hold'em. Straddle on in this hand though, so $10 to go here. Folds over to the player on the button who raises it up to $15. Uh, apparently they did not get the memo here. We went no limit guys, not limit. We're going no limit. So anyway, $15 in this hand. Uh, we looked down at pocket deuces in the small blinds. Happy to make a call here for 15 bucks. Player in the big blind calls and the player in the straddle calls. So four ways to a favorable one, you guys. Nine, six, deuce, flopping bottom set. I check, player in the big blind hops out of flow here and bets 30 bucks. Straddler folds, button makes the call. Definitely going to raise here. We unblock top pair, unblock all the strong hands, and unblock the draws. We unblock everything. So definitely going to put in a race here. I make it $140 to go. Player in the big blind calls, and the player on the button thinks for a little bit and then folds. Turn is the ace of clubs, bringing in a second flush draw. Definitely want to bet something of a reasonable size here now that there's two flush draws on board and we still don't block anything of value. So I decide on a sizing in the moment of $260, but I think that's a little bit on the small side. Uh, again, with the board so wet here, I think we can size way up. But 260 it is, and my opponent thinks for a little bit before deciding to fold. So uh, I thought in the moment that I didn't bet enough. Uh, turns out maybe I bet too much, but I don't really think so. Despite the fact that my opponent said he folded an ace high flush draw, which I have a little bit of trouble believing, but he seemed pretty sincere about it. I don't know, seems weird, but uh, that is what he claims he folded, and uh, we drag in the pot. Thank you. All right, in this hand, no straddle on, and the cutoff raises it up to 20 bucks. We look down at an ace-queen offsuit on the button. Could three bet, could flat. I decide this time to three bet, and we make it $60 to go. Blinds get out of the way, and the cutoff decides he would like to see at least three cards. He makes the call, and we go heads up to a flop, which comes down queen, ten, ten, rainbow. He checks it. Definitely could see bet. Definitely could check back since no flush draw on board. Not afraid of too many cards, but I think I'm going to go for some value here. I bet 40 bucks, and my opponent check calls. Turn is the seven of diamonds, which brings in a backdoor flush draw. He checks it again, and I think I want to continue betting here, bet for value, charge some uh, potential draws that exist out there, and I decide on a wager of $110. My opponent actually decides he would like to play for more money. He makes it $250 to go. A little worrisome, but A, for that price, and B, having top pair, top kicker, don't think we can do anything other than make the call here, but kind of want to tread a little bit lightly. Riff is an offsuit ace, and this time my opponent checks it. Now this, my friends, is where I made a terrible decision. Uh, I decided to go for some very thin value, and at least the good news is that I decide on a very small price. I toss out a chip of $100, again, going for very thin value, but value from what is the question? Uh, that I'm not too sure of. I guess maybe like King Queen or something like that, but um, seems a little suspect on my part. Anyway, my opponent snap calls, and uh, we roll it over before he rolls over Jack-10 of diamonds. So. 
Um, I think a check back there, even though it looks so pretty, having top two pair with the ace-queen, um, I think a check back there on the river is pretty prudent, and I think my bet on the river kind of sucks. So we lose this one, send it to the man in the cutoff. The second thing I'm doing out here, as mentioned, betting on sports using the online sports books. Uh, and it's not just like some uh, degeneracy type of thing, which, hey, if that's your thing, enjoy, I say. But uh, I have uh, kind of been interested in the sports betting thing, um, but I've been trying to find a way to search for an edge. I'm, I'm not really all that interested in just firing. It is a fun way to make any sports events a lot more interesting, betting money on it, but you know, I, I kind of want to, you know, search for an edge if possible. And I know it is possible. And uh, the way that I'm doing that here in Arizona is using a site called Odds Jam. Um, so it's a pretty cool site, especially if you are a resident of one of the uh, newly legal regulated online sports betting markets. So um, I'm going to put a link to this site down below, but it basically lists out every single day a bunch of plus EV bets that you can make online very easily. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this here because I know you guys come to me not for sports betting information, but uh, I've been dabbling with this site. I used it a little bit in Michigan and made a bunch of bets out there. And uh, by not wagering very much money on each bet, um, so far I'm up about $600. So I want to keep trying to use this site. Um, I can use it here in Arizona because as mentioned, newly open and regulated sports betting market here in Arizona. And uh, I'm firing, firing a little bit. And I put a link to that spreadsheet down below so you guys can track the progress and see how that's going. Um, if you guys want to try out the site, try it out with me. They gave me a promo code, Andrew, which will give you 10% off of the, uh, the odds jam services. So you guys can get in there and dabble if you would like, or if you would not like, and you just kind of want to follow along and see how it's going for me. Check out the link below to that spreadsheet and uh, you can follow along in my sports betting adventures and uh, we'll see how it goes. 3-5 was the biggest game I could find yesterday, but today there's not one, but two 5-10 no limit hold'em games going. I get a seat in the must move game and it's a $2,500 max buy-in. So that's what we're in for to start. We find some playable hands pretty quickly and in this first one, there's a limp in the cutoff before we look down at ace, deuce of diamonds. Overlimping is probably fine with suited aces since if it goes multi-way, we can possibly flush over flush somebody, but raising usually gives us more opportunities to win the hand. I raise this time and make it 40 bucks. The big line makes the call and the limper comes along and we head three ways to a flop. Queen nine eight with two diamonds is good news and bad news kind of a situation. We flop a lot of equity with the nut flush draw, but it's so connected versus two ranges that I don't think we're gonna be able to get a C bet through all that often. So when the action checks to me, I decide to check it back. The turn pairs the eight and brings a second flush draw on board. The big blind checks and the cutoff this time bets $85. I'm gonna call in position here and the big blind comes along as well. The river is the 10 of spades, completing the backdoor flush and putting four to a straight on board. Obviously, I'm done with the hand if we face a bet, but that's not what happens. Action checks to me. Since we always lose at showdown, and since this is such a board changing card, it seems to me like a wager is going to be plus EV here. It's tough for a two pair or trips hand to call under these circumstances, and even a straight has to be worried about flushes and boats. And since I checked the flop and called the turn, it should look more like I have a spade draw than the diamond draw that I do have. So we're gonna go for it here with a bet of $260. Good news is that the big blind folds pretty quickly and the cutoff also acts quickly, but unfortunately it's in the form of a call. I get shown the king jack of spades, which he traps me good with on the river, allowing me to bluff at it with my air ball diamond holding. In this hand, I look down at a king queen off suit and make it 35 to go from the hijack and the button and big blind make the call. Three ways again, and this time we flop top pair on king six deuce with two clubs. Big blind checks and I bet 70 and the button says that he likes the flop too. He makes it 150 to go. The big blind gets out of the way and facing the small raise, I make the standard call here. The turn gives us top two pair and adds a second flush draw on the board. I check and the button doesn't slow down, betting 220 this time. I wouldn't expect him to have flopped two pair on this board. So we're likely either behind versus a set. 
We have him drawing dead versus his King X hands, or he's drawing to a flush. So there's merit to raising here to charge the ladder while stacking off versus the sets, but we fold out all his bluffing hands and his weaker King X hands that he might improve with on the river. I decided to make the call and keep his full range in there. The river is a great looking offsuit seven, which doesn't change anything. And I check it over to him to allow him to continue telling his story. He decides the story is over and checks it back, which means we always win here. Playing shorthanded now as most of the other players have been moved into the main game and we're down to just three contestants playing for 510 No Limit Hold'em Glory. The player on the button straddles for $20 and we look down at pocket nines. I make it 80 to go, the big line folds and the button defends. Heads up to a super favorable one this time, flopping top set on 9-8 deuce with two hearts. Sometimes top set will block a lot of our opponent's continuing range, but there should be plenty for him to work with on this board. I bet $50 here, partially with those factors in mind and partially to encourage it a little bit. We get the good news as the button raises it up to $175. Since we're out of position in this hand and it's very unlikely that my opponent is raising with top pair here, I think this is a spot where we can put in the rare three bet on the flop. If he doesn't have top pair, he either has a really good hand or a draw, both of which will probably put more money in here facing a small raise. I click it back with a raise to $325. He digs for a bit and he makes the call. The turn is the Jack of Clubs, once again, adding another flush draw on board. And even though it completes a hand like Queen 10 of Hearts or 10 7 of Hearts, it also improves a hand like Jack 10 to top pair. So I'm going to continue to try and charge those types of hands and I bet $475. My opponent thinks a bit and continues with a flat call. Big pot brewing here as we head into the river, which is an offsuit six. It's a pretty safe card, all things considered, and is going to allow us to keep betting for value here. Again, we could be losing to a straight, but I don't see him using this card as a bluff on the river. And he'll also likely just check back his top pair hands and maybe even a two pair hand. I think I'm sizing for a bit, but eventually ship it in for about 1500 effective. And my opponent snap folds, meaning he almost certainly had a flush draw here. One of the other two players gets called for the 510 main game, and while I don't mind a heads up battle, our game does end up breaking. I have $3,725 in my stack here after buying in for a total of 2,900, giving us a profit of $825 in the 510 streets. I'm still looking to play and capture some more hands, so at this point I can either go play 3-5 while I wait for a seat in the 510 main game, or I can grab a seat in the 1020 game that's running. I say we move up in stakes, and that's what I'm gonna do. I sit down in the 1020 game and buy in for $3,000 to start. In this hand, the straddle is on, so we're playing 10, 20, 40. There's three limpers, and we look down at king, queen, off suit on the button. I wanna play the button aggressively, and two pink cards gives us an opportunity to punish these limpers, so I make it $200 to go. Apparently, that's way too small because the big blind, the straddle, and all three limpers make the call. So massively multi-way here to a flop of queen, eight, four, rainbow. Action checks to the player in the cutoff who bets into me for $380. I'm going nowhere, of course, and toss out the call and all the other players get out of the way. Heads up now to a turn, which is a deuce and shouldn't change anything. And my opponent takes all of his $1,250 and ships it in. It's not a super comfortable spot because he bet into four opponents on the flop, including the preflop razor, and is now shipping his whole stack in versus me on the turn. But I already know what I'm gonna do here, so I don't take too long before making the call with top pair, good kicker. Turns out we're up against another king queen, the suited in spades variety, and it's anticlimactic, but we do profit a bit thanks to the other preflop callers. Strala is on again in this hand, and again, we have the king queen off suit, making it $125 to go from the cutoff. The straddler defends, and we go heads up to queen seven five with two diamonds. He checks, I bet 130, and he calls. Turn is an offsuit three, and he checks it over to me. Definitely some two pair hands that we could lose to here, as well as a potential straight, but I'm gonna go for more value versus weaker top pairs, pair plus draws, and naked flush draws. So I bet $325. My opponent thinks for a bit and calls. The river is an offsuit 10, and again, he checks it over to me. Checking seems fine, but versus a straddler's defending range, I think he can have enough one pair hands here to warrant a value bet on my part. I decide on a sizing of 580 bucks, and after thinking about it for a while, 
he decides to let it go here and we drag this one in. Straddle is on in this hand by that exact same player as the previous hand, and this time we look down at the 9-8 of diamonds. I make my usual $125 raise, and only the straddler makes the call. Heads up again to king-8-3 with two spades. When he checks it to me, betting or checking back seem fine. I like a bet in this spot, A, since we can charge flush draws, B, because we can fold out hands with two overcards to our pair, and C, we can also improve versus top pair once in a while. I bet 100 and my opponent pretty quickly raises to 300. It's maybe the least desirable of outcomes here, but with middle pair and a backdoor flush draw, we can only call here. The turn is a queen of diamonds, giving us additional equity, and this time my opponent bets $500. Not ideal with only a pair of eights, but with so much potential to improve, I make the call. The river pairs the king, and this time my opponent bets $600. Now it's a really interesting spot. Our hand makes for a pretty reasonable candidate to call with here for a couple of reasons. A, we unblock spades, and B, we block sets and two pairs that he could have on the flop. Once the river pairs the king, it makes it less likely that he would have one of those too. And just how many good kings that are worth a flop raise could he have here that just flat call pre-flop? That last question is ultimately what leads me to my decision. I saw another hand that this opponent played where he had flat called with queens pre-flop only to then raise a low card flop. So it is possible that he could have some stronger hands in his range that he played passively pre-flop. I decided to let this one go. And since it's a friendly game of poker here at Talking Stick, my opponent kindly shows us the king six of spades for top pair plus flush draw on the flop. No straddle line in this hand and action folds around to the button who limps in and we have ace nine of spades in the small blind. This hand raised to be ahead of a single limper's range, I would think so. I make it $100 to go. The player on my left defends his big blind and the button comes along for a three-way flop. It comes out an eight three deuce with two spades giving us two overs and the nut flush draw. I see bet for 150 and only the big blind makes the call. The turn is an offsuit 10, which isn't great because we obviously whiff but it puts an overcard up. So in the moment, I decide I wanna try and put pressure on some small and medium pairs, and I continue with another bet for 430 bucks. My opponent wastes basically no time in making the call again, and we're gonna need some help here. Help arrives in the form of the absolutely beautiful king of spades on the river. Now it's just a matter of sizing, and in game, I decide to go for four figures, sliding out $1,015. Looking back, I wonder if this is too much since my read at the time was that this player was hanging out in the small and medium pair neighborhood, but I'm not sure we can get any value from those hands anyway, so maybe we might as well go big versus potential two pairs and sets if they do exist. Seems like they don't in this particular instance as my opponent begrudgingly makes a good fold here, awarding us the pot. Just wrapping up the session here outside of the Talking Stick Poker Room, one of the finest poker rooms in all the land, chilling here at the Sportsbook Bar. Apparently that's the name. Uh, I don't know if that's the official name, probably not, but uh, there is some, some wagering, there is some sports, and there is a bar, so maybe it is the Sportsbook Bar. Um, just sitting out here sweating some of the sports bets that were made, but not really sweating. Uh, more on that in a minute. Um, the, the poker results, the poker went well across all three stakes this weekend. Some mathematics. The final cash out after wrapping up the session, the 1020 session, the final cash out was $6,587. I had bought in for a total of 3,300 and chips. If we subtract the $825 win in the 510 game, we come to a number of $2,462 that we won in the 1020 game. Total win for the evening of $3,287. We add the 400-ish to that from the previous day, so $3,600 in the poker, which is fantastic. Um, the sports betting also seems to have worked out this weekend so far, namely because of a total YOLO bet that I did. Um, there's lots of like, bonuses and promos and stuff. When you sign up at a, uh, a sports book, an online sports book, and you make a new account, they throw a bunch of bonuses at you. Um, one of them, the Caesar sports book, if you wager up to $1,000 and you lose that bet, your first bet, 
they give you that much back in free play. So I went for the maximum EV in this uh, in this play, bet $1,000 on a random NHL game, and uh, it happened to be at plus 195 odds. We won the game, we won the bet. That's, uh, that's a win of $1,900. Um, so that's pretty sweet, perhaps a little bit lucky, maybe should disregard that in the overall sports betting tally, but it'll be fun to uh, partake in all the sports betting as we go, and as mentioned, Click the link down below to follow along in those adventures. Uh, the next stop for all of the uh, vlogging fun will likely be down in Texas at the Lodge in Austin. Check out this schedule of, uh, of events that we have during the Monster Meetup Week. Brad Owen will be there, Doug Polk will be there, and with any luck, maybe we can get... Maybe... Maybe we can get Poker Face Ashley in the mix at some point. Oh, sorry, Poker Face Ash, not Poker Face Ash. It's either Ashley or Poker Face Ash. One of the two. Poker Face Ash. <laughs> um, hi. Hello. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Uh, stay tuned. More to come. Uh, subscribe, like, you know, the usual YouTube stuff.